Welcome to the Quicks of F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Joining me today is everyone's favourite Ferrari fan, my favourite Italian. It is Vincenzo Landino. How are you doing, Vincenzo? Very good. Uh, I'm out in the sun, so I can't complain. But yeah, I may yeah. start sweating profusely, so don't judge me for it. <laughs> no, look, it looks gorgeous over there. Uh, what, is, that, is that in your garden? It is not. It is in the uh, community clubhouse. Oh, There's okay. a pool and a gated area. So oh, I'm in here. I live in a gated community in oh. South Florida. They're everywhere. So, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. The weather looks a lot nicer than it is in London, UK. I'll tell you that for free. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about a few things uh, that we can get through whilst I've got you. And one of them was um, a tweet you put up, which I thought was quite interesting in that the Uh-oh. American... <laughs> this is a good one, though. Right? <laughs> the American... Uh, the American broadcast rights are up for grabs, I think, after the end of this year. Um, mm-hmm. So ESPN are the current rights holders, but it would appear that there's um, a few people who potentially come uh, come on the scene um, who could potentially bid. So I think that included, um, so it's obviously ESPN again, Netflix, Amazon, and was it ABC? NBC Universal. NBC Universal. That's the one. Um, so, why? I guess in England, the the rights have pretty much been with Sky. Uh, they've been with Sky for a while. They were kind of shared between Sky and BBC slash Channel Four for a bit, and then Sky made a deal with Bernie for like uh, for ages. I think six six seven years uh, to have exclusive rights with Channel Four having highlights. But I guess with the growth of the sport in America, I guess, how important is it for, for F1, uh, this next, I guess, purse bid? And, and I guess how, how lucrative could it be for, for F1? So, you know, Liberty Media is looking for a hundred million dollars. That's as straight up as I can be. Um, ESPN has offered supposedly reported that they offered 70 million, which is massive increase over what they've all, what they're currently paying which I believe is like 5 million a year. Um, so it's very lucrative for Liberty Media to have these rights come up at this particular time, you know, where the sport, the popularity is, I, I don't know if it's peak, but the velocity of its, yeah. uh, of, it, of its interest is really, really hot and heavy right now. You've got a third Grand Prix coming up uh, here in the United States. Miami, for all intents and purposes, went well. Yeah. Uh, there were issues on the ground. I think they'll figure that out. Yeah. But for the most part, it went well. The celebrity that was there, which, and again, in America, a lot of that stuff matters. In the United States, that stuff matters. Who can be seen at these events? Yeah. Is it this an event I want to go to to be seen around these types of people? Yeah. And that's that's important. That becomes important for uh, the American options uh, it, it be, you know, people think Monaco might be ridiculous, right? Yeah. But every G, every GP in the U.S. essentially becomes like a Monaco. Maybe outside of Austin, but even Austin is is a very uh, a city that has changed quite a bit over the past five ten years. Yeah. So uh, that's 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 the nature of being here in the United States. Kind of is what it is. Yeah, and I think what surprised me with Miami was that look, I I was listening to a couple of podcasts, non sport podcasts, non like you know kind of black culture podcasts, and I'd never heard them mention the Formula One, and they were talking about oh, did you watch the Miami GP? Did you see who was at the Miami GP? And it was so like I was like, wow, this really for that weekend it was whether you were into f1 or not you knew that there was an event which had enough clout to have the likes of khalid there d wade gabriel union like all of those people that were there it really was an event i think like i say in that sense it was clearly 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 and and that's you know that's what it's not a bad thing for the sport 
well wow. purists purists will have you believe that it is the worst thing in the world for the sport but it's not and i'd say this from someone who's not a uh drive to survive convert i've yeah. been around the sport for 30 years 30 ish years yeah. so it's not like i don't understand the purists but i also understand where the sport is coming from it's we've talked about this on the last time I was on the show. Yeah. It's a bottom line game. It's it's a numbers game. But if you look at any other sport, whether it's football, American football, yeah. basketball, the goal is to what? Sell seats, sell yep. merchandise, yep. uh, sell broadcast rights. Okay, well, how do you do that? You don't necessarily say to yourself, Well, we can only fill the stands with purists. Well, no. I mean, I'm not gonna like do you think Arsenal, Spurs, whatever, they're going to look, they're in their stadium and they're going to say every single one of these people is a diehard. No, we know that's not true. Yeah. We know that's exactly. not true. We know there's not diehard, you know, from birth, it's in their blood watching every game. We know that. Yeah. So why is Formula One have to be any different? So when we, when we you know, we hear people talk about things like that, it's like, Okay. I mean, yes, I'm jealous too that a lot of people got to go to certain events, but uh, yeah, I the think... media doesn't care. It's money in their pocket. <laughs> no, exactly. And this is the thing, right? Like, look, we had situations um, a few years ago, you know, towards the end of the Bernie era where, you know, the sport was eating itself. There wasn't enough money coming in and, you know, teams were dropping out and obviously costs were going up. And you look at what Liberty have done in getting new fans on board and breathing new life into the sport and, and, and increasing revenue, that can only be a good thing. With that is going to become a new audience. And with that is going to come, I guess, these, you know, they want to have these celebrities. Whether people believe it or not, I think what staggers me the most about F1, I guess, purists is this idea that F1 doesn't need these celebrities to, to sell the products and it's like i hear you on one sense that the sport will always be the sport but i think it's quite naive to think that yeah. formula one doesn't benefit from having an association with the upper echelon of, of celebrities in the world mm -hmm. and, it, and it always has you know this that's always been something that it's been into um yeah. so another thing um i guess in the future how do you see i saw you write quite a cool article and it wasn't just, it wasn't really a fun base, but I did see similarities about creators in sports, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the increase in creator-led media, uh, specifically kind of like watch-alongs and how watch-alongs yeah. have become really popular. Um, given the growth of F1, and I, you know, I, I know, I know I've seen uh, watch-alongs uh, in F1 as well become, become quite popular. I guess, yeah. do you ever see a situation where F1 themselves work with content creators to, I guess, allow them to create content with, with raw kind of footage or, or partnering with content creators to create content, seeing as, you know, the growth of the sport is coinciding with the growth in creators and, and, and you know, that's only really good for the sport, I guess. Yeah, I you know I, I think it's only a matter of time for that to happen, and you have such opportunity to reach different audiences. The biggest challenge and the hardest part of this is exactly what the first thing we started talking about was the broadcast rights, and so you have rights holders that are spending. You know, let's take ESPN; they're offering seventy million, but someone's going to pay a hundred million dollars for these broadcast rights every year. Do I really want some guy in his basement, or 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 girl, or you know, whatever, um, at home in their basement or in their makeshift <laughs> studio? or some guy sitting in his <laughs> outside like this. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, there, and the reason why I say all that is because of lack of control, right? Yeah. You, you don't have control over the message at that point. 
I, there's a fundamental shift that has that would have to happen in order for that to be accepted. And that shift would have to be relinquishing the ability to control the, the narrative or how yeah. the sport is broadcasted. Right. So sure. You're broadcasting, um, the visuals from our feed. Great. But what are you putting over it? What are you saying over the top yeah. of that? Uh, you know, that could go downhill quickly, but it, listen, it can also be very, very positive. So I could see it being some sort of verified, and I don't want to use verified up, preferred partner type yeah. program where it's, you know, you are a creator that is clearly making this type of content. We've looked into you. It's not just open to anybody. It's, it's yeah. open to a select few. I could see that being the case. And I can see that that being some sort of option. Yeah. We're probably still probably for I mean, I'm going to say five, probably five years before you're looking at rights holders saying, sure, go ahead and use it. I mean, like I still can't view sky yeah. clips in the U S yeah. right. So there's another issue. Um, Formula One does a pretty good job, I will say this, with not taking down and, and, and uh, enacting the DMCA on, on like clips that people share on Twitter. Yeah. So, but other sports are pretty bad at that. Any of the UEFA or FIFA uh, sports, if you go and share a clip, it gets taken down. Um, so, Formula One's done a good job not really enforcing that, or or maybe they are. It's just taking them longer to get them all. Yeah. But you, you just have a battle with you know rights holders and the sport itself with how do we allow this to happen in a way that's beneficial to us. So it has to. It still has. You know, remember, it's going to have to help them with something. If they let's say they take all the view, and I, they can do this because I've I've actually done this with uh, with Red Bull. Okay. And Red Bull, so what they did for their livery launch was they had select creators customize how now Red Bull customized the stream oh, okay. based on what the cre what the creator asked for. Yeah, there was options. It wasn't it wasn't fully customized. They allowed you to put like your logo over it if you had mm. a logo. They allowed you to choose if you wanted to hear from Christian Horner in your stream or if you wanted to hear from technicians and engineers. Right. Um, so, you know, things like that. Yeah. Then they would, they would get you the feed and then you would be able to uh, plug that feed into, let's say I was going to do, let's say you and I did a live show that day. Yeah. And then we said, hey, we're going to kick over to the Red Bull livery launch we, you know, on our back end and kick over to it, we could do something like that. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, it, it was custom to an extent. And they did that with a few different creators. I, uh, you know, full disclosure, Oracle's a, a, a client of mine. So I, that was how I got oh, okay. involved with that. But yeah, I mean, Red Bull wouldn't have been my, my obviously first choice. <laughs> but, but no, it's yeah, still, so nevertheless. It's, so it's, it was still, it was, that was the first time I had seen something similar to that so there are ways to make it work yeah right where maybe f1 or the rights holder controls the feed customized for the broadcaster based on something predetermined but you know it would take work and it takes time and that takes infrastructure and resources to make things like that happen yeah i think i think i as a content creator myself i think i'm seeing the beginning shoots of traditional media reaching out to content creators in some form. So, you know, you're having yeah. people like Bryson on uh, Energy for Monday. I, I remember there was the, mm -hmm. the the pair of lads who were invited to Imola, I think. I can't remember their names, but mm -hmm. they, they had a podcast. And, and you know, bigger content creators being invited by teams and so forth to, to make content and whatever around the team. I think that's, I think that's a good start. And I think... I think with F1, like you say, we're we're, ye we're years away from I think full integration and 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 allowing people access to the field. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that the more popular, and also F1 content creation, really when you compare it to the likes of football and let's say Arsenal fan TV or you sure. know the big yep. 
football podcasts is we're like I'd say five six seven years behind in terms of just the journey that all the content creators are on and the development of the type of content that they make so you know I think once F1 kind of catches up and once the content creators kind of catch up I think there will be a marriage in there somewhere but like you say I think it's going to take a few years at least for it to be fully integrated and 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 side by side um so look I can't have you on without talking shop um at the last Grand Prix Ferrari had Mm -hmm. the opportunity uh, to have a to lift, I guess, the Charles Leclerc curse at Monaco. Um, sure. um What are your views? I guess now we've had some time to to think about it, and obviously it's been a while since the Grand Prix. Um, how do you do? You, I guess do you bl- lay any blame on the team, or was it? just one of those or I, I don't know how how are you feeling about about the Monaco Grand Prix I guess uh, you know a week and a half after it happened it, it was one of those just that I needed to forget I, I don't uh, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> no it's fine it, it's one of those you as a as a fan I said I would be you know, pissed but I also said to myself, typical, which, yeah. which, which nothing on Charles because he, yeah. he was driving perfectly outside of his mind. I mean, didn't put a foot wrong the entire, the entire, uh, you know, race really didn't qualifying was incredible. Yeah. And, and he would have he would have put even more time if Perez and Sainz didn't have if Perez didn't have his incident he yeah. would have he would have widened the gap so you know to hear Max say like oh that was a pole lap or helmet say oh that was that was hard. we were gonna go, yeah okay all right no you weren't dude no you that's weren't all. you you Not weren't at all. Not at all. um those types of things are a little aggravating uh Checo did a great job so shout out to Checo for for a great drive he he just stayed in his lane and did what he had to do yeah. It it's so painful when you you know there's other podcasts I've been on and I'm I don't know if I said it on this one but and I got crucified online by uh, Spanish F1 Twitter right Carlos Science fan for even hinting at the fact that you know hey if if they don't pick a number one and number two or at least say we're going to favor this driver in the race or we're going to you know not team orders but just understanding like we need yeah we need to you know hey we're prioritizing your race you're 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 running in first place we need to prioritize leclerc's race yeah yeah that's a chat that that's going to be an issue and i've said this numerous times i i'll say it again and that reared its ugly head in monaco because carlos who, by the way, Carlos's move was absolutely correct. Yeah, for yeah. his race. Yeah, but for the team, yeah, it you know it compromised. Now Carlos would have probably finished third. Yeah, in 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 that scenario, um, so you would have potentially had a one three finish instead of a two four finish. But that yeah. would have you know given you at least an advantage over Red Bull in both drivers and in constructors yeah um situation but now you you know now you're in a position where you feel okay the team made another a big mistake the team doesn't know how to control this is what bothered me the most the team number one didn't know how to control science like you know when perez gets called in for a a pit or if perez gets told gets told from the pit wall to do something he, he he does it yeah because that's the strategy, right? That we're yeah. listening to them. When you know Carlos pushed back on it, you know the minute they, that radio call came over, I was like, "Oh, that's it." I, I, I almost didn't. Eat, I almost turned off the race because really? I said I knew what was going. Well, you could, you know, you you get to the point where you're like, "Okay, he's not going to do good call to stay out on your on your drive," but then all of a sudden it was like we didn't know. And I say we. 
the Ferrari team didn't know how to combat that with Charles. They, they didn't, it was like, yeah, they were completely lost. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating when, you know, after a few, a string of races where, you know, you had signs DNF twice, uh, you had, you had, you know, you had Charles situation, two situations. Yeah. It's like, okay, wow, we're both running. We're running. We, we've got one, two, we're, we're, you know, front row on the, uh, in Monaco. Yeah. And then of course, like now we're the stat. Oh, have it, you know, another, another race that uh, a team hasn't finished first after locking out the grid, you know, the, the, the front row, yeah. they don't finish one, two. And it's, and, and that's, that's just disappointing. It's just disappointing beyond anything. I, I can imagine. And look, I am a Mercedes fan. So, and as are a lot of people on here um, who listen, so I'm not averse to pit wall errors, I guess, and, 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 mm-hmm. and freezing on the spot and not making decisions and those that lack of clarity, I guess, coming back to haunt the team. Do you think now then, I was having a chat with Cameron, a good friend of the show, and he was saying that at some point Mercedes are going to have to say who the number one driver is because if the car gets better and they're just yeah. taking points off each other, it's not going to help anyone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, because everyone knows, like you said, Red Bull have yeah. got a clear number one and number two as evidenced in Spain. Now, Ferrari is saying that there's no number one and two, but Obviously, after the start that Charles has had and the start that Carlos had, some through, you know, his own fault, some through not his own fault, Mm -hmm. there's clearly a points differential there. So are you saying that essentially going forward, there's, you know, to make life easier for Ferrari and be more efficient, a number one driver is going to have to be, or just, I guess, like I say, a preferential strategy treatment is going to have to be used by Ferrari if they're going to maximize their opportunities this year. If you're not coming out to say, this is your clear number one, this is your clear number two, then you at least have to, you know, at at least based on what you've seen in qualifying that weekend, you know, or what you know about the setups each weekend say, okay, well, we're going to prioritize Carlos his race this weekend because clear, if, if it's truly about the team and maximizing points, and it's about the constructors' championship. Then do it that way. If it's about which which it, it would it would benefit them to do. Yeah. If you're worried about the drivers' championship, then you do what what you know what they're doing over at Red Bull. But by doing it that way, it also helps you in the constructors because you've got a team player to an extent in Checo, who is doing his best to fight off and, and keep the the. The other cars at bay and by doing that he's maximizing his points yeah. because for them a second third place finish is great for yeah. him right you yeah. finish second or third and and your driver's finishing you know is winning the race every every race you're just stacking points yeah yeah you know the biggest gap the biggest gap is between first and second you've got a six point gap right everything else is kind of it almost i don't want to say it doesn't matter but but it, it's smaller, yeah, for sure. Like smaller it, gap, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, mean, I understand. You, you have to. You've got to pick a lane. Same thing with Mercedes. You know, I don't think the car is ready for them to necessarily have to pick a lane, so they can delay that until the car gets to the point where they're truly battling for first and second, or or second and third. Uh, at that point, they're going to have to say, okay, is this Lewis or is this time for George? And, and I think either way, they'll, they'll be happy with, with that. I mean, Lewis won't be happy or George won't be happy. I think the team could be happy because they're both – I mean, Lewis has proved that he knows how to drive a car. We, yeah. we saw that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And George is proving that he, you know, he can suck it up and do what he's got to do when he has to do it. And he's, he's been the most consistent driver on the grid this season by yeah. far. So – it's 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 a tough one for Mercedes because you know it really is all because the car is so bad and obviously Lewis has been running 
alternate strategy, not strategy, alternate setups, and they, you know, they're really kind of, I guess, working as a team to bring the car up to where it is. And you know, uh, in the race, Lewis has had some bad luck. There's also been some performances which aren't where he would want them to be. Um, and George has had, you know, some good luck as well. But also, he's been very consistent in how he's been driving. So, it's created. A situation where George has a significant amount of points more than Lewis, and you know, until yeah. the until the car is at a level where they're fighting for four wins, there's no point in doing that. But the moment it is fighting for wins, and let's say they're in a position where okay, maybe the season is salvageable to some extent, then yeah, there may have to be some kind of different difficult conversations in that. Yeah, I agree. We'll, we'll I agree. See. You have to have difficult conversations. I mean. This isn't, this isn't, you know, little kids sports right now. This, yeah. this is, these are, these are grown men driving fast cars, expensive cars, yeah. and they make a lot of money. The teams make a lot of money. The drivers make a lot of money. You, there, there's no sugarcoating. I don't, is that sugarcoating a yeah. British? Uh, okay. There's, there's really no shit. Sh- yeah. You, you can't sugarcoat this, you know, and, and these, like uh, let's take Ricardo as an example. Yeah. Uh, the guy doesn't want to drive. You can see it in his eyes. Like he doesn't in the interviews. He ha- he was totally different in Monaco. Like in the interviews he was get- doing in Monaco, he he was like a completely different person. I don't think he was smiling and laughing as much. Um, wow. You know something like I don't want to go on the Ricardo train, but like I like the guy. I just that's hurting that team tremendously. I, I look. If we're going to be very honest, right? It's not felt right since day one with Ricardo. If if I'm going to be mm-hmm. really, really honest, yeah. I think they thought he was coming to that team and he would A, lead that team and be able to almost tutor Lando Norris and B, that they would be able to market the two of them as this like zany pair of drivers who, you know, almost like the Carlos and Lando situation but just even better and they've got neither of those things they've got a driver who, who I, don't, I don't think can has historically said he can't set up cars or he doesn't really take you know he's not an engineering expert i guess and he doesn't really take care about you know uh, setting up cars and engineering and so forth he's been beaten by lando those two had absolutely no chemistry with each other and uh and 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 now his performance is on the grid i just i mean there's it's 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 almost getting worse this i mean i've had people say to me that they don't even watch the, the mclaren is it unboxed or the yeah yeah whatever the mclaren product you know their yeah. thing is uh since daniel joined the team because they're like it's just it's ter- you know and, and this is not me saying this i don't no. i don't watch it um but I've heard, you know, that, that it's just not good. Like Daniel, like they don't work together. It's so, it, it just doesn't work. So from that perspective alone, you know, you've got decisions to make there. Uh, they've got another two years, I think, on his or the rest of this year, and then a, and then the next year on yeah. his contract. But, but, you know, what a wa- what a waste of of having. You know, I think I, I don't I don't think Lando's great driver i think lando's a good driver yeah so you're wasting any opportunity at you know at another third fourth place fight like you did last year because you are sticking to some guy that and and again i I like ricardo i like daniel i i i don't even like saying what i'm saying right now but Mm. performance performance there's other we, we can go up and down the grid with with drivers that aren't performing that should be that should not be driving especially with the fact that there's only 20 of these guys yeah. in the whole world they get to drive in this spot. So if you're not performing at a level, I mean, Mick Schumacher, if you really want to get controversial here, like, you know, okay. is he is he worthy of that seat at Haas? Anyway, uh, uh, I know well, we've gone off on a tangent, but. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But look, as a Ferrari fan, there's people saying that, you know, Carlos Sainz is essentially keeping that seat warm for Mick Schumacher. I, I, if, if they put Mick in that seat at the end of the year, if they were to say, we're going to switch drive, which they're not right. Yeah. Cause they've got Carlos for two. If they were to do that, I would, I would sincerely consider just 
not caring what happens. That, yeah. it, it, it would be it would be awful. Um, with the amount of damage he's done to his cars just in the, in the last few races, you know, is that especially with and they want to drop? They're trying to drop the cost cap, yeah, even lower. How yeah. how are you going to compete? How are you going to compete? I you know, again, I like Mick. He's such a great guy. Like, he seems like a genuine. He's got the last name, of course. Yeah. But right now, he's just not. He's shown that there's. Are there any flashes or glim, you know, glimmers of? Okay, he's got it. I, you know what? What he got into Q three once. Yeah, once. Like, is that is that supposed to be? Like, are we supposed to be really excited about that? No, no, we're not. I mean, look, look, look. The fact that Kevin Magnussen's come back and outperformed him with consumer ease, plus the crashes. It's just not looking great. It's not looking good for Mick. Um, yeah, Magnuson. Magnuson's hit. You know, I think had a little bit of bad luck with with the car, mm. um, but yeah, he's totally outperforming him. Look at uh, Zhou Guan Yu in the Alpha. I mean, he's. I'm not saying he's driving significantly better than, but he's he's every week. You know, we're watching him drive, and he's he seems to be improving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what we're not seeing. He, with, he's with solid, Mitch, but... if unspectacular. But as a rookie, that's really yeah. all you want. Like you know, Correct. you don't want him. You know, to, he's not crashing, and that's that's the main thing. Um, that's that's what you need right now, especially <laughs> in the cost cap era. Like we can't, you can't yeah. afford that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Look, looking forward, uh, we have Azerbaijan this weekend. Never know what you're gonna get. Um, Ferrari just seems like a car that can be good absolutely anywhere. I, 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 if there was, if there's a solid prediction one can make is that Ferrari will be there or thereabouts for pole position. Um, yeah, I, but you know what? As we've learned, it means nothing. It just, it truly means nothing. It, it, it means nothing even on a track like Baku or on a track like Monaco. I'm sorry. Yeah. And if, if pole, this is where I guess this is the statement I should have made earlier. If pole position means nothing at Monaco for your team, then something's wrong. <sighs> Quickly. What's wrong then before you, before you go, what if, if Ferrari have to change one thing, I guess maybe not this season because I mean, we're, too, we're too far into it. But. Maybe some better strategists, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like somebody who actually can 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 push back on these guys. It seems like maybe there's a little bit of a lack of control. Mm. You know, Toto seems very demanding. It's like I'm in control. You know, Lewis is going to listen to Toto at the end of the day. Yeah. And if the 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 the, the sport's biggest personality is still going to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the right words, but it's still going to allow him. I don't want to say allow, but you know, if he's going to say to his boss, like, yes, I listen to, I trust yeah. you wholeheartedly. Kind of like toe the every, line, essentially. Every, every driver has no excuse not to, uh, there's no, there's no, you know, pushing, pushing back on that, but it just even, the, I don't know, I guess it's a body language thing, but it just feels like, oh yeah, we're okay. You know, like, Mm. we're cool we're good you know we've got a great yeah okay you got a great car but are you gonna make the right decisions in the race you know yeah. it, are there are these decisions being made with confidence uh are you instilling confidence in the drivers it, you know I, I don't know i i don't know what it is exactly this this again and i'm also second in, in constructors second and what fifth or second and sixth in the drivers? It's you know I know that I'm I'm being very dramatic right now, but I do think that we're still early. Yeah. And if these things don't get better now, nip it in the bud, so to speak. You're looking at this just compounding over the course of the season and getting worse. Yeah. To the point where you cannot recover from it, or it's very difficult to recover from it. I think by Silverstone, which is halfway through the season, yeah, we'll have a we'll have a very good indication of what's going to happen especially because mercedes will have their major package upgrade i believe yeah. by silverstone or at silverstone uh i believe red bull and and and, and red bull did they i don't even i don't even yeah first like they've been Whatever. doing it the whole season but yeah so at that point everybody should have their packages pretty set up we yeah. might get something else later in the season but 
at that point, we'll know. But if if you are Ferrari right now, you need to be saying to yourself, we need to be way more confident. We need to make the, the strategy needs to be, I don't know how their strategy always seems to be like so much worse than everybody else's. It's like, aren't we all hiring from the same pool of people? Aren't all of these, these, you know, engineers and strategists, aren't they all coming from the, each other's, like how are they yeah. just not putting it together? I would say that's that's their biggest their biggest challenge, and uh, you know I, I would definitely be working with Charles to keep his confidence up. Yeah, if he starts doubting and questioning things, like you know we it could because I don't think I still don't think Charles is is quite at the Verstappen level of being able to just truly block everything out and not care about anything because he yeah. truly doesn't. Right, he's been he's been groomed and raised by his father to just genuinely like it's all about racing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Charles just needs to, as long as they can stick to that, work with him and keep him confident in his, in his driving, I think they'll be okay. But the strategy just has to be better. I mean, every uh, race. It, it's almost it's kind of eerily reminiscent of like, I guess maybe 2017, 18 mm-hmm. Seb, where I guess the car, I, before he started crashing, but it, it did feel as if Seb was, trying to call shots from the car a lot sometimes yeah. when he was at Ferrari. And maybe that came from a lack of trust with with the strategy team. And, and I, I guess you don't want – that was that's a four-time world champion. And I guess if he yep. wants to do that, that's fine and whatever. But you, we don't want his, someone in their first title fight to feel like they can't yeah. trust the strategy team, right? That's – that's yeah, you right. want to be able to just to be able to drive. I mean, Charles was – Charles was very upset. I mean, he was very, very upset. Yeah. Rightfully so, but he, very upset. Uh, it just even even the way that whole call went down, pit, yeah. you know, box, box. No, 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 stay out, stay out. Well, yeah. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. You know, they, and then on top of it, you're double stacking. So, what? It's it's almost like what are you seeing or what are you watching that we we, we the fans are watching from TV and we're able to understand and see. And we don't even have real time data, right? We're still delayed. Yeah. How are we able to see these things? And they they can't. So yeah. I, that's that that's where I get frustrated with with them. And, and I think if they don't fix it quickly. It's gonna just it's not gonna be good. It's not. Well, look, I I hope that it does get fixed. Maybe not too much. I hope it gets fixed. So you take points off Red Bull, and then Mercedes get better, and we take points off you, and then you know everyone's happy at the end of the day. But uh, I do think. I do think Azerbaijan would be, I do think you guys would be able to bounce back. Um, but like you say, we just don't know this season. Qualifying to race, it, it does seem to switch up a little bit. And the straight line speed of the of the Red Bulls, I guess, will be quite key down that long straight in the it'll, back. It'll, I think it'll be interesting either way. Yeah. I think we will get another good race here. Like it's, This track has produced some, some solid races. And, uh, yeah, this is, I, I probably, this is the least, uh, interested I've been in a race in a long time, oh, just because no. I'm like, I don't want to hype. I don't want to hype anything up. I'm going to wait until the weekend yeah. to see what's going on. I've, I've been trying to just block out anything that's been going on with the team because you know what you hear all this talking, there's just constant talking and, and banter back and forth with teams and, yeah. um, you just, it'll drive you nuts. No, for sure. Look, uh, if I tell you that I am not really enjoying this season, I, I, I genuinely. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I feel you. It's uh, it's it's a difficult one. It's definitely a difficult one. I don't think the I don't think the regulation changes have done what they really wanted them to do. But um, no, that's a whole other. That's a different podcast. But yeah, and I, I was gonna say this earlier. Yeah. Complete. I mean. These cars are boats, man. These cars are boats. They're heavy. They're long. Like, how? Either have like a street circuit spec car, yeah, that you can, you know, so you can continue to race on on courses like Monaco and Baku, or stop making the cars bigger. What is the? I don't understand the point of making these cars bigger all the time and heavier. Like, they, uh. it's crazy. It's crazy. Look, that is a whole podcast, and we'll, we'll get you on for whole that. <laughs> But, but I, I really thank you for your for your insight and that. I really appreciate yeah, it. Uh, and look, good luck to Ferrari this weekend. And, and have a lovely weekend yourself.
and good luck to Mercedes. It'll be <laughs> it'll be a it'll be a better season if Mercedes is properly in the three horse race, uh, especially Lewis, and and you know don't want to see him fall too far back. But he's not. You know, he's he's right there. He's He'll right be up there back, still. and he, he's due a lot of good luck. So Karma will come back in some way. So it will be fine. It will be fine. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Vincenzo. Really appreciate. Thank it. you, bud. That's okay. Take care. Welcome back. Right. So that was us talking to Vincenzo Landi. Now you can find him. We'll link his socials afterwards and all of that, all of that, all of that. Welcome back to the show. Look, if you've got this far, making sure, making sure, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, leave a review on Spotify Podcasts. If you listen to us on Spotify, I want to get us to like 250 reviews. I saw someone else's podcast. I'm not going to name names. But they said they had 600 Spotify reviews. We've only got 180. That's not right. That's not right. So please, if you are listening to this, leave us a review on Apple Music. Leave us a review on Spotify. And thank you. Thank you for for tuning in. Here we are. It's just me. So we've got a bit of time left. So let's give you some more ask nyasha this is where you guys send in questions and i answer them and i am going to answer some questions now apologies i am quite ill like make no mistake right now i am quite ill i've had a heavy weekend and i'm old as you all know and it's just got to me man it has got to me but i'm here for you like yesterday i was too ill to record i'm sorry but Today I'm feeling a lot better, uh, and so I'm going to answer some of your questions ahead of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix that we've got coming up at the weekend. So, I'm just going to answer these randomly. Oh, actually, there's one I wanted to answer first. Uh, And this was from RDM Ghost 1, ARD. Is F1 cutting out the FIA a step for the better? Butter, let me tell you right now, yeah? The FIA are the most incompetent organization. Just like, I cannot, every time I think these guys can't do worse than they actually are doing, they go ahead and do worse. Let's read some quotes from our favorite FIA leader, Mr. Ben. Suliam, I think is how it's pronounced. I don't want to mispronounce his name because that's disrespectful. What is disrespectful? This guy cannot stop putting his foot in his mouth. This guy is, he's got a foot fetish for his own feet. Bare toes in his mouth. Let's listen to what he said in this quote here. Nicky Lauda and Alan Prost only cared about driving. Now, Vettel drives a rainbow bicycle. That is mad, first and foremost. Lewis is passionate about human rights and Norris addresses mental health. Everybody has the right to think. To me, it's about deciding whether we should impose our beliefs in something over sport all the time. He goes on to say, I am from an Arabian culture. I am an international, I'm international and Muslim. I do not impose my beliefs on other people. No way, never. If you look at my operation in the UAE, 16 nationalities. Name me one federation that has that many nationalities. On top, there are over 34% women and seven religions and even more Christians than Muslims. I am proud because it creates credibility and merit. But do I go and pose my beliefs? No, the rules are there. Even when there are issues when it comes to, for example, jewelry. I didn't write that. the fuck what the fucking fuck how offensive do you want to be in one quote it's like he's going around with a paint gun just out of his car just aiming at the most vulnerable people oh what okay lgbt lgbt yeah what bang racism oh human rights yeah we'll have a little pop at you mental health Lando Norris, Lando Norris is in there like, why is he vote me for? This is crazy. This is the leader of the FIA 
who is essentially saying that we that that age old <clears throat> that age old saying of we need to remove politics from sport which is incredible because this guy was insistent on us racing in Saudi Arabia when there was a bomb no bomb sorry there was a yeah a nearby Aramco plant was bombed whilst cars were racing or just before cars were racing during practice we're there to whitewash those countries let's like sports watch those countries let's not make any mistake about it f1 is going to certain countries to sports watch it russia attempted it saudi arabia are attempting it like there's no other reason and that is politics so it's okay for politics for sports to be used as a way of sports washing areas where their politics and human rights issues are bad to make these countries look good and you'll insist on us racing there even when it seems quite unsafe to do so lord forbid i mean does Vettel, I mean, Vettel's bike. Why is Vettel's bike in it? Is Vettel's bike even rainbow? That's crazy. Lewis is passionate about human rights. God forbid. Lando Norris addresses mental health. Lando Norris has done a few interviews on this morning and now he's getting cussed out by the FIA. It's crazy. I, look, Formula One as a, as a, um, as a as an entity are not perfect right formula one have made mistakes but if i look at everything that i've found irritating or bad about formula one recently i can trace it back to the fia the stewarding is the result of the fia the the report that come out last year the whole michael massey thing was a result of the FIA. The jewellery ban, a result of the FIA. I just don't... This was supposed to be a new era, right? John Todd was supposed to to leave and, and Ben was supposed to come in and it was supposed to be this kind of new progressive organisation that was supposed to come in. But what has actually happened is that you know, I think we've, there's been quotes that team bosses are, have been quite surprised at just how backwards uh, Ben Suleim is and um, Ben Suleim. The quote says, oh my God, the quote has got a different spelling to what I think his name is. And that's why I said it wrong. Apologies. But Ben, we're going to call him Ben. Just seems to be focused on the wrong things right now. One thing we need to get... Consider this guy's crying. I can't just go to the shop and get uh race directors. Why haven't you put in succession plans? Why aren't people training to do this job all over the world? Why do you mean why is it that we're not able to there's no consistency even in whether to start a race in the wet or not? There's absolutely no consistency. It is a joke, it's an absolute joke. I don't personally, I think Formula One's outgrown the FIA. Everything the FIA does, Formula One could do for itself. I think the shame would be if the money was to go from Formula One, what that does for the feeder series, like can Formula One really support the feeder series and that whole kind of grassroots thing? I don't think it can. And I'd assume a lot of the money that the FIA make from Formula One kind of is supposed to feed down, but I mean, is it really when people have to pay millions of dollars just to get a seat in F2 and then that car might be the most unreliable car in the world? And, you know, what are you really paying for at that point? So, look, the sport is in absolute disarray um, and we need need better governance. I do think F1 could split from the FIA, though, but I don't know if it's right right now. But for sure, at some point, at some point, maybe... Farino, uh, and Farino at Farino underscore 10 asks, what is your most traumatic moment as an Arsenal fan? I would say, I mean, this season was pretty bad, but I would say 
In 2011, my life was very different. I dropped out of uni. Um, I dropped out of uni. I was, um, for all intents and purposes, I was couch surfing um, on my friend's couch. Oh, was I couch surfing at this point? No. So, oh yeah, at this point, it was February 2011. I just split up with my girlfriend at the time. And I was living alone in the flat that we shared. I uh, And <clears throat> so I think I split up with her on the 4th of February, which was a Friday. And then on the 7th, I went into work and I got fired. And I got fired because I was a menace, basically. I I just thought, basically, it was in a call center. And I, at this point in my life, I was, I used to get high a lot. Let me just say, I used to get high a lot. Very, very high. And when you get high a lot, you have a warped sense of reality right like you just think that certain things are okay i went into work one day wearing a onesie so for those who don't know onesie pajamas are an all-in-one pajama set so i thought because i worked in a call center and no one none of the customers could see me right because i'm on the phone all the day i'm selling internet and you know i'm selling broadband right so, <laughs> so i went into work high no i wasn't high that day but i went into work in a onesie uh, i thought it was okay and obviously it wasn't now no one said anything at the time but then i went into work on monday and uh, i i got fired so i was unemployed and the following Saturday, or maybe close to that Saturday, uh, was the, what was the Carling Cup final, right? It was Arsenal versus Birmingham. Arsenal hadn't won a trophy for like seven years. It was a big thing. So you know what? I was like, this is going to make me feel better. I got a coach from Sheffield, which is where I used to live, down to London at like six in the morning so this is like a five hour coach yeah i wake up at six o'clock i get on this five hour coach down to london get on the coach get to london i'm so sure arsenal are gonna win at this time i used to write an arsenal blog so like every day i would write about arsenal and that was kind of like my first sports creative thing i used to have this arsenal blog um so i was just so sure we we're gonna win i was so sure and then uh, we went to, so I didn't even go to the game. I remember we, I went to a pub near the stadium, basically. And um, oh, man, I didn't even book a train back. I think I was going to like go home back to my parents, but I wasn't really talking to my parents at the time. This is a mess. Anyway, long story short, Arsenal fucking lost that game, right? In the last minute, I think we took the lead and then they equalized and then in the last minute there was a mix-up between the keeper and the defender and they scored and we lost and i i to this day that is the day that that's the day that i that football kind of died for me like before i'd always have this like optimistic kind of outlook <coughs> oh sorry i'd always have like an optimistic outlook i was always like yeah football was like a happy thing for me and then we lost. We lost to Birmingham City in the Carling Cup final, who I think got relegated that year. So that's how, that's how bad they were. And um, and yeah, I got the I got a train. I had to pay like I think I paid like a hundred quid for a train back up to Sheffield because I didn't want to go home. And um, and it was just the most depressing day ever. And since that day. I've never looked at football the same. It's never held the same lust, lustre for me. I can't dare the word, but yeah, that game really sucked. And I cried 
and and you know it was like my life is already so bad why are you doing this to me world i was like the whole world is against me so yeah thanks for bringing that up i hope you're happy i'm not but it is what it is oh my god i'm so so i'm really ill um ng mode 11 says what size do you want for your red bull shirt um i would like a large actually give me an extra large so i've got more surface area to piss and shit on next question um what do we watch first arsenal play or the grand prix david noble at djn racing fan i always watch the grand prix so since i've become obsessed with like formula one and make content about it like arsenal do really come second i can now <coughs> i can now just find out about an arsenal result uh without watching the match if the grand prix is on at the same time i'll watch the grand prix i go to games as well so sometimes i actually just have to watch the game when i come back um i'm also watch the grand prix when i come back but most of the time yeah i'll have if i have to watch them at the same time i'll have the grand prix on my main tv and then i'll have i'll stream the football on my laptop grand prix is more important it's more important these days like do you know what i mean um right let's look uh, oh this is a good question um which race would you want to commentate on in person and would you want to do the grid walk during pre post race from m helms 96 who uh was the person who did the incredible uh valjee Botta step parents uh meme and uh the vanity fair one as well which was awesome so thank you um <clears throat> If I could commentate on a race in person, it would probably be Brazil, of course. Um, would I, I'd love to do a grid walk. I think my personality would be really good for a grid walk. Um, I would, yeah, I would love to do that. But really, to be honest, the the goal, <clears throat> the goal is to go to races and <clears throat> live stream our own um like and to make our own content to live stream our own kind of pre-race and post-race show i think that <clears throat> that for me what i would love to do it's expensive though but i think it could be possible but i think yeah going going to races and like setting up somewhere like in and around the the racetrack and and just being able to have like a live element i really want to make i think i really want to make like an alternative <clears throat> like a full alternative to the main broadcasters and i think that's happening now you know you probably just heard of vincenzo where we discussed uh content creators being able to partner with with f1 and, and so forth but look the way it's going like look tommy gets tens of thousands of viewers on his um on his pre-race, oh sorry, on his uh, race watch-alongs, uh, Wolfpack gets thousands, Cameron gets thousands, like, these guys are, are doing really well already, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and um, <clears throat> I think, for me, I always want to do something a bit different, um, so if I'm going to do something, or if I'm going to enter a space, I want it to be, like, vastly different, so I'm going to have to take some water, oh my god. Oh my god my throat so i think for me what i'd love to do is um kind of like the pre-show that we were doing before that we kind of tested before i think once i've got more time probably next season having like a real studio set up um so having a screen having um like sections having little VTs, creating like a whole show. I think that's what I want to do. Rather than me just in front of a camera and, you know, I guess watching the race and you watching me watch the race, right? I think if I was going to do watch alongs, maybe having multiple people and guests and like a real studio set up and all of that, I think that would be where it's just not 
one person i think for me i'd prefer to do it if it's more than one person so if if it's me and tandy or if it's me and someone else like i think that would be cool but we're gonna do loads of cool shit we're just at the beginning and let's remember we're still actually quite small i think that's the thing where like you know we were on a podcast with josh revel the other day just revel so not revel just revel uh on cameron's cameron's thing big up cameron every time um and he was like oh Chris, i've fine i've seen you guys you guys have got like four thousand subscribers right and i was like ah. Actually, don't we don't, but it probably feels like we have a lot more, a lot more subscribers and views than we do because obviously our stuff on social media gets shared so much by you guys, and we're so grateful for that. But uh, we're not yet at the level where we can really do the things that we want to do, and I think that will come with time. But also, we've only been going for a year and a bit, so this this year is definitely about growth. And I love to get to, I think I said 10,000 subscribers at the beginning of the year. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'd love to just get to like, yeah, to like 5,000 would be awesome. I think we can do that. Um, we're just going to keep pushing, keep pushing the content on there. We're just going to keep making more and more content, but it, you know, it's uh, time and, and effort, but yeah, I'm excited, but all of that stuff at races and all of that will come. And obviously, yeah, I'll talk about the event in a bit, but. I hope that answers your question. But in short, I want to, uh, yeah, I just really want to create like an alternative to the to, to the broadcasters. And I want to create as much fan-led content as possible. And uh, hopefully we'll get to that point. So thanks for that question. Um, and, and someone else asked a similar question. Adelina, if you get to take the pod to races, what would it be like? What would you dream to do? And I think, yeah, I think that's it. And I think recording, <clears throat> I think like as next year we'll go to a race. I don't think we're going to go this year, but the thing is as well, we could go to races and I could, you know, I could fund it or whatever, but I really want to run this like a business. I used to do food content. And I was always just taking money out of my own pocket to do stuff, right? Which is fine. Right? It's a passion project, whatever. But like, if me and Tandy are going to go to Grand Prix, I want us to go and I want us to have like the best things possible. And I want us to be able to make the best content possible. And for that, that makes money. And I guess I want to make money before I spend money. And, um, and if we go to a race, then I really want to do some like cool stuff. I guess I want to be able to do some cool stuff that is like, I want to prove what is the what's the term i want to prove a concept right so all these ideas i have instead of me going to companies and saying hey i'd like to do this with you i'd like to do it first get it done show them and then be like look let's do this then we can partner with brands and then we can have all these ideas so i think that's the plan i think this year a lot of in-house building the platform building the um all the sides of it youtube TikTok, insta <coughs> Patreon and then we'll go from there so thank you for that question um, someone asked a lovely question my favourite Grand Prix to watch that was from Kyle Co- Kyle Coach Coach Kyle Carr is their name I think at Kyle Coach I think we've discussed before <laughs> A really underrated race, without the takeaway percent that, a really underrated race I love is Monza 2018. I think Lewis going into Monza, Vettel spinning, uh, and then beating the Ferraris, and obviously beating Kimi, I think that was awesome. It's one of my favourite races to watch back um, because it's one where they kind of pit him and he has to come back, pit him from second and he has to make up ground again, kind of like Hungary 2019. Um, but he just does it so well, and he, he just absolutely kicks Raikkonen's ass. And I, I, I it's one of my favorite races. Um, I don't really watch races back as much as I used to anymore because I'm always just creating. <coughs> um, I used to watch. I used to watch. Um, I used to watch Brazil 2016 a lot. I think that's an incredible Lewis win. 
Um, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't really watch the older ones that much, like the McLaren ones. I think in the off, in the summer off-season, I'm going to like, maybe we'll do a video and do like top five Lewis McLaren wins. And I think I'm going to watch some races just so I can get more reacquainted with that stuff. Because I, I honestly, I, I haven't watched McLaren Lewis wins for ages. I and mean, you've got so many, you've got Fuji, Silverstone uh indianapolis um hungary 2009 um there's so many good races there's more that i'm probably forgetting off the top of my head but um yeah i that's something i'm gonna do and then maybe we'll do a watch along together with some lewis mclaren races i think that'd be really cool so thanks for that question let's go to oh jamie really cool question sorry i'm not well uh if you could cook lewis any meal what are you making pardon me um <clears throat> um right if i could cook lewis any meal um i would cook i'm really good at pasta Actually, you know what? Look, I do these really cool cauliflower bites, which are like uh, cut cauliflower like into florets, and then put them in like a batter with soy milk and flour. So, and then you can either deep fry them or just put them in the oven, which is what I like to do. Very healthy, and then cover them in like a um, like vegan. Sp- so, in a pot, get some vegan spread maple syrup and sriracha so it's like basically like honey sriracha wings but there's cauliflower wings they're really popular whenever i make them for vegans they love them when i did a cookbook it was the most popular thing in the cookbook um and people love them so i would probably cook something like that i do like a whole range of things i would make my own pesto and do them like a really nice pesto um pesto pasta uh, i would obviously make him a vegan pasta from scratch do all of that i'd love to make him like i'd love to do him like my vegan chinese fake away i would basically just feed him absolutely everything absolutely everything but if it was one thing probably the vegan cauliflower bites but he's a you know he probably eats a lot man he goes to the gym a lot so he'd need like a big meal Oh yeah, like maybe some green rice in there. Trayvon loves when we cooked for we had dinner with Trayvon. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna come off this. It's too much. Uh, when I um when I was cooking when I cooked for Trayvon, uh he really liked the green rice that I made for him. So I'll do that because that's popular. And Tandy says I make great tender stem broccoli, so We'll do that as well. So out of, yeah, so we've got some green rice, cauliflower bites, tender stem broccoli. Maybe not the pasta as well, because that's two carbs. But maybe I'll make him some kind of like, yeah. Oh, I make, I, I do a really good vegan uh, sweet potato and spinach curry, which is really popular. So maybe I'll have that. Maybe those four things and we'll have a lovely meal. And I could just tell him how much I love him. Because I love him so much um but thank you for that question uh okay let's see one more question and that question is oh no that's it i think i've asked all the questions uh oh yeah what do you think is the best way for a new fan to learn more about the technical aspects of f1 uh we get this question a lot um i would say obviously following people who do tech who you know so like bryson um matthew summerfield <coughs> um craig scarborough is another good one um those three. Oh, sam collins as well watch tech tuesday um on f1 and that will give you like a thing. but you know what just watching races you'll get a gradual understanding the more you listen and um 
that'll be it guys i think i'm gonna go because i'm struggling absolutely struggling right now um so i'm gonna answer one more question <coughs> have you got any tickets left for the 31st of july we're sold out we are sold out can you believe it can you believe it i honestly we've kind of like touched on it in the previous pod but it's really um it's really humbling uh the response that we got to the live show we're gonna put on like an incredible show we're gonna like obviously there's free food gonna be there the space is just it's really quirky little space in south london um i think you guys are really gonna like it the live show like the production on the live show i don't think people realize like we're pretty much putting most of the money back into the production to make sure that not only is it good for the people who are at the show but it's good for the people who are watching from home as well because they're just as important as the people who are coming but we are going to run a competition to um to get some winners for the tickets apologies two six um we're gonna run a competition i think for two more tickets to be won so look out for that but no it's sold out um we sold out in 36 hours it's insane absolutely insane um 50 tickets gone and um Without your support, you know, we, we would never be able to do something like this. But we're paving the way. I don't think anyone's done anything like this before. So <clears throat> I think I think that's really cool. I think you're going to see a lot more content creators do stuff like this. And, um, and, and so they should, right? But what we have going on with you guys with quickstop f1 is so special it's so special and um i just want you guys to know that we're, we're eternally grateful for that and uh, we're going to put on a great show for you but look out for the tickets on the 31st sorry the tickets at the end of june i think we're going to run a, a competition so make sure you look out for that but um but yeah guys i'm so sorry my voice i thought i was well enough to do this but my voice is my like my throat is hurting with every word that i'm that i'm putting out so i'm sorry that a the podcast is late i'm sorry that b the podcast is short in both time and probably quality on my part um hopefully i'm better by sunday for the main pod um we're going to try and do most pods for monday on sunday night now so they should be with you monday morning um but yeah i just want to say hopefully mercedes saw their shit out we'll see baku coming up who knows who knows who knows what we ever saw it's such a random race you can never really bet on anything so we'll see how it goes but until next time guys no matter what life throws at you keep it on the black stuff and i'll see you after the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Take care.